Over a year ago, I made a video explaining the Skyner's iceberg, back when that was a topical subject and everyone was doing iceberg videos. And then about 11 months ago, I made a second iceberg video and now we're back again with Skyner's iceberg 3. But this time, I'll have a little bit of help, like last time. I brought two of my esteemed friends, Mike Noid and Collecting with Spinny, and they'll be hopping in the video every now and again to explain a couple of entries for me. Before this video gets started, make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to both these dudes, they are awesome. But with all of that over, let's go down the rabbit hole that is the Skyner's Iceberg. But be prepared, this could be a long venture as this iceberg has a hundred entries in it. Let's get started. Zo Crystals Zo Crystals can only be found in Skyner's Bar's Adventure or in Skyner's Giants. In Skyner's Bar's Adventure, they appear in Molokan Mine, and in Giants, they appear in Heroic Challenges. Zo Crystals can only be broken with bombs, but what makes them special is that there are four certain Skyner's that can break them, just normally with their attacks. Those Skyner's are Prison Break, Crusher, and Flashwing. Now, those three make sense, but for some reason, Whirlwind and PC versions and Xbox 360 versions can destroy the Zo Crystals as well. And apparently, Zo Crystals are a reference to an item in Star Control. 2 that have the same name. The strange thing is, I could have sworn that Zo Crystals were a thing in real life, but when I looked them up, there was nothing to be found for it. Weird. Bash was the first Skander created. The entry simply refers to the fact that Bash was the first Skander ever created. If we're not counting the fact that Spiral and Cinder already existed, Bash was the first Skander that was 3D printed and made. This was back when he was just called Rock Dragon, and was one of the first of the five characters they made for Skanders, which at that point in time was called Spyro's Kingdom, and was a completely different game. Mirror of Mystery the Mirror Mystery is the 22nd chapter of Skyner's Trap Team, and the final chapter as well. This level is pretty unique because it takes place in another universe where all the roles have been reversed. The main villain of the series, Chaos, is now good, and Eon, the Skyner's mentor throughout the games, is now evil and referred to as Evilon. This chapter sees you teaming up with trolls who are now good-natured creatures to take on the evil Mabus and eventually take the fight to Evilon, who is in a mirror for some reason. Once you destroy the mirror, you defeat Evilon and the level is over. Spyro's Kingdom Spyro's Kingdom was the original game that Skylanders was. This game would have been an RPG style game where you don't even play as Spyro. In this game, Spyro would be a full grown adult and the king of Spyro's Kingdom. The Torch Life aspect would be in this game, however, gameplay for this game has also been released as of 2021. Although eventually later in the game's development, the devs decided to make Spyro a playable character, as you simply couldn't have a game called Spyro's Kingdom and not play as Spyro. The Spyro's Kingdom starter pack also was going to consist of Spyro and Bomb Troll, who would later become Boomer, and Tarclaps, who would later become Zap. This game's mock cover was also released last year. Apparently the game was very close to something the Toys R Us was going to move forward with, and was close to hitting the game's alpha version. But Toys R Us requested for Activision to give them 10 more months to work on the project because they thought, quote, this is fun and cute, but could be something so much bigger, end quote. Eventually, with more time to work on the project, Spyro's Kingdom would later become Skylanders, but it is interesting on how close we were to getting Spyro's Kingdom releasing in 2010 and Skylanders not existing. Variant figure lore. So my only guess to what this could mean is that there is lore behind certain variants like how legendaries exist or how dark variants exist. So in Skylands, they have gladiatorial style events and competitions and the winner of those are immortalized with golden statues that are magical and become guardians. These are the legendary Skylanders, and it's said that special portmasters can bring them to life when Skylands is in peril. When it comes to dark variants, each one has their own backstory. Dark Spyro is the only dark variant in SSA, and Spyro mastered each of the elements, but there was an evil side to his powers. Eon used some spell to help Spyro out, and eventually Spyro was able to control his dark side. So Spyro and Dark Spyro are not two different characters, they are the same dragon, so if you play co-op with Spyro and Dark Spyro, you would have officially broken the Skylanders lore. The Dark Swap Force characters became Dark Variants when some Skylanders were fighting Chaos. 
Some petrified darkness blew up and it consumed the Skander. Spyro helped the new dark variant Skanders control their powers. And in Trap Team Chaos made Dark Traptanium and was planning to use it on some Skanders. But the Trap Masters came just in time and destroyed the Dark Traptanium. But some of them absorbed the darkness, however they apparently already learned how to control the darkness. And then for some reason it never explained how dark variants became dark in Superchargers or Imaginators. The first iceberg fact that I'm going to be bringing you guys is the Oculus. So the Oculus bears a very similar resemblance to Eyebrawl. It can be seen floating around in the Wii version of SSA. Oculus means I, if you didn't know in Latin. Oculus battle theme is the same as the Necropolis theme. And the I apparently was based on the Eye of Sauron from the Lord of the Rings. This eye also has horrendous sight and pretty much needs glasses, which is pretty interesting for something that's literally only an eye can barely see anything. Magic Trap and Reignited Trilogy In 2018, the first three original Spyro games were remastered and they were made into the Reignited Trilogy. In the first game in the trilogy, Spyro the Dragon, one of the main things you do is free dragons that are crystallizing green crystals. One of those dragons is Zekomo, found in the Dreamweaver's homeworld. When you free him, he holds an object that looks a lot like the Magic Hourglass Trap. This is an obvious easter egg for all Skylanders players. Beta Figure Cabinets This entry simply refers to all the leaked pictures of beta figures found in Toys for Bob's office, usually inside of cabinets. Some of these figures found in these images are ones that never made it to the games, and some are just different poses of Skanders that we already know about. One of the more famous pictures shows a Sun Dragon, which was the original design of Camo, and an old design of Boomer. Other images from Giant shows another pose for Thumpback and for Bouncer. Another one from Giant shows a picture of a different pose for Hothead, a Cyclops that was cut for Shroom Broom, and then we see a snapshot, which means that he was originally going to be a Giant character and in the very back you see what was probably going to be the magic giant but was scrapped kind of sad because this one looks pretty awesome and finally you can also find a figure for arbo it's pretty fun to look at these beta figure cabinets just to see all of what could have happened flynn Flynn is one of the main characters in Skylanders, and he appears in each game. He acts as the comedic relief character in most cases, usually lightening up the mood in darker scenes and making a lot of jokes in the series, sometimes at the wrong time and sometimes at the right time. Flynn also likes using the phrase boom a lot, and in almost every game, the game ending will be Flynn saying boom in a very epic fashion. Definitely one of the best characters in the series. Who could be more evil than the Skylanders' main antagonist? Why, the woman who spawned him, of course! Chaos's mom was first teased at the end of Skylanders Giants, when Chaos returned to his castle after failing to conquer Skylands with the Iron Fist of Arcus. She makes her full debut in the next game, Skylanders Swap Wars, as a co-villain alongside Chaos. Chaos's mom was the dark portal master to attack the Cloudbreak Islands, which were defended by a group of Skylanders that were banished from Cloudbreak due to the volcano's eruption, turning them into the Swap for Skylanders. 100 years later, which is the game's story, helps Chaos by lending him her minions. But after Chaos is captured in the Phantasm Forest, Chaos's mom catnaps Tessa and challenges the Skylanders and you as a portal master to one more fight. The portal master wins by trapping Chaos's mom into a mirror using her own dark magic spell, and I can assume that Chaos's mom stays trapped in the mirror for the rest of the Skylander series, but she did get a brief mention in Superchargers. Which reminds me. Say hi to your mom for me. Then you have Cassandra, Chaos's mom in Skylanders Academy. While Chaos's mom in the games is actually evil and talks down to Chaos for most of the time, but acknowledges him when he does something evil, Cassandra was portrayed to be evil, but turns out she was actually good but turned evil due to the dark magic she used to banish Strikor to the endless void. The reason she's mean to Chaos is to lower his self esteem to keep him away from the book of dark magic since Chaos is easily corrupted by power. By the end of the show, Cassandra helps Eon and the Skylanders re-banish Tricor and stop Chaos from destroying the Core of Light and replaces Eon as the head of Skylanders Academy.
This was something I missed when I first played Skylanders Giants. There's a secret cutscene after you beat the game on Nightmare Mode. And the only way to unlock Nightmare Mode is from beating the game on any difficulty, which means you'll have to beat the game twice to be able to see it. And Nightmare Mode ain't a cakewalk, so be prepared for a massacre. The cutscene shows a nest of chompies hanging out and half-fiving and chest bumping each other in an underground cave where the Iron Fist of Arcus was left after defeating Chaos. I guess it's just supposed to be a funny and cute ending. I mean, the weakest enemies of Skylanders Skylanders turned the lost city of Arcus into the Chompy Club, making the fist part of the music band. Also, the song in this secret ending appears again as a trappable Chompy's theme in Skylanders Trap Team, which is a pretty fun callback. References in Crash 4 This entry says references, but I can only find one solid reference to Skylanders in Crash 4, and that's in the Day of the Undead Inspired level, where if you look in the background of the level, you can see an Eruptor float. This is kind of playing homage to the Eruptor float that was flown during the Macy's Day Parade. Skylanders 7 became Insane Trilogy. This is less of a fact and more of a theory. Now this theory is based in fact, and the fact is Skylander modules were found inside of the Insane Trilogy, so it is completely possible that Skylander 7 eventually turned into Insane. I don't believe this however, I believe that they were working on some Skylander's Imaginus Part 2 content, like adding more battle classes or senseis, and they were doing it inside of the same engine as Insane, but eventually the project was scrapped and there's still some parts and pieces left in the code of the game. Lair of Chaos We Path in non-Wii versions of Spyro's Adventure, during the final level, the Lair of Chaos, you have to take four floating platforms to get to the final boss. These platforms take a while to finish, while when you play it on the Wii, there's just a long series of paths you have to complete to make it to the final boss instead. Krakatoa Krakatoa is a fake leak that was found on 4chan of a sensei called Krakatoa. This character looks pretty weird, but this guy became pretty infamous as Krakatoa started the talk about Skylanders Imaginators Part 2, seeing as they might add new senseis, which wasn't technically false, but in this particular case, this character was never real. Although, I mean, he kinda looks cool. Chaos Castle Original Parents not 100% sure what this refers to, but I'm pretty sure this is talking about how in the chapter Chaos's Castle in Skylanders Giants, there are pictures inside of the castle and they show Chaos with his parents, so these are his real parents. There is also a picture of Chaos where he has an afro. Interesting. Next we have Buzz and Flynn are related. So, it was hinted in Trap Team that Buzz is actually the father of Flynn, and it's weird because neither of them know, but it's kind of implied, subtly at least, that they are actually father and son. Insane Assets I'm pretty sure this one is talking about the three sconders found in the Insane Trilogy. A person riding a firewolf, some sort of undead hockey player, and a rabbit with a funny looking vacuum weapon. Chapter 15 and 16 are mixed. This is talking about how chapters 15 Crawling Catacombs and 16 Cadaverous Crypt of Spyro's Adventure could be mixed for whatever reason. This is because on Spotify, the composer for Spires Adventure, Lauren Balf, titled the song for Crawling Catacombs, Crawling Crypt. But I think this can be easily disproven because the story of the game, it makes sense that you go to Crawling Catacombs before Cadaver's Crypt. He doesn't take no for an answer. The Weapons Master is an NPC in Skylander Spires Adventure that you can't access until you get the Eternal Fire Source. If you go up to him before that, he will be in a sleeping state and you cannot access any dialogue. But once you do access him, there is a glitch that can happen with the Weapons Master. And it happens when you say no to going to the Arcane Armory after finishing the level Quick Servo Vault. This will cause him to revert back to his sleeping state and stay in a sleeping state. If you do run into this glitch, it softlocks the game and you have to reset your game. In the book, The Skylanders Annual 2013, it kind of pokes fun at this glitch, mentioning that he doesn't take no for an answer. Cursed Dreadyacht. 
So I think this is referring to one of two things. So in Giants, there's a chapter called Aerial Attack, and this chapter is all about a ghost ship ambushing the Dread Yacht, and you eventually go on a ghost ship. This could be what the cursed Dread Yacht is, or it could simply be the Dread Yacht itself, which in this chapter, it gets cursed because of the events of the ambush. Hothead killed thousands. In Hothead's backstory, it's said that magic oil was discovered in Skylands, and apparently at some point in Hothead's life, it got very hot outside, so he jumped in the magic oil to cool off, which caused an entire island to explode. This gave Hothead some of his powers, but this also means that if anyone was on the island that Hothead was on when he jumped into that magical oil, he killed them. Hothead potentially killed a bunch of people because some islands in Skylands are huge and are populated. Blobber's Fate After Cutthroat Carnival In the chapter Cutthroat Carnival and Giants, one of the NPCs that helps you out is Blobber's, a returning character from Spyro's Adventure. You make a deal with him that once you leave, you will help him escape the carnival as well. But Flynn had some bad blood with some of the people on this island, so when they recognize him, we need to escape real fast. And with all this stuff going on, we forget Blobber's, and he remains on the island. So no one really knows what happens to Blobber's after this, as he is never present in the game after Giants. Swap Force. Though we do know that he eventually gets out because he does come back in Skyner's trap team, but we still do not know how Blobbers escaped Cutthroat Carnival. Also something really interesting that has nothing to do with this that I just wanted to mention is that the voice actor for Blobbers also voices Leonardo in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series. Trollympic Games Trollympic Village is a racetrack on the 3DS version of Skyner Superchargers. The only thing I could find or think of when it comes to this entry is right before you start the track, Pandergast says the best of the worst go there to see who can take home the gold. So I'm pretty sure he's talking about the giant chompies all over this course. They are competing in a competitive ski match. So the Trollympic Games are competitive skiing. Willikin Village this is the seventh chapter of Skyner's Giants and one of the most recognizable levels within the entire series. A lot of things happen in this chapter. You get introduced to the Wilkin people, which after this chapter appear regularly in the series. And of course, at the end of this chapter, Chompy Mage, one of the series most loved villains, is introduced. This level is also famous for being kind of creepy when you're not in the awake mode during this level. There are two modes that you can activate within the level. The awake mode sees everything in the village looking normal with vibrant colors and the sleep mode, everything is gray, music is slower and buildings are now wooden boards. This is, in my opinion, one of the best levels the series has to offer. Mount Cloudbreak's Cannon In the Chaos Boss Fight level, the Cloudbreak Core, near the end of the fight you have to use a cannon to defeat Evilized Chaos, and this is pretty weird because why would a random cannon be in a volcano in the middle of nowhere? Auto Gyro Cavern Disaster Near the end of chapter 14 of Giant's Auto Gyro Adventure, you need to escape the cavern with your ship as the cavern starts to collapse in on itself. No one but machines live inside this cavern, but obviously this is a disaster as the entire cavern is destroyed. Hold on, hold on, don't worry, this isn't a weird Skylanders NFT or anything. It's actually part of the Skylanders lore. The Stone Monkey is a guardian of the robot graveyard and rampant ruins of Skylanders Swap Force. For 1,000 years, its role as guardian is to stomp any robots that attempt to rise from their graves. In Swap Force, the Skylanders activate the Stone Monkey to stop evil Glumshanks from digging up more evilized crystals. However, evil Glumshanks retaliates and rams into the Stone Monkey. Sadly, we don't know if the Stone Monkey survives, but it does appear in Superchargers and Superchargers racing tracks. Snow Globe of Destiny this is the prize you're trying to get in Skander's Superchargers Racing, the 3DS and Wii version of Superchargers. It is a snow globe that grants its user one wish, and you get it by completing the main game of Superchargers Racing. At the very end of the game, Flynn gets the snow globe of destiny and wishes for a giant enchilada, and he gets exactly that. You see a giant enchilada landing on an island nearby. The next topic we have here is Magna Charges Magnet. So 
thinking about this, I was like, yeah, it's kind of obvious, he's a magnet, whatever. But then it occurred to me that his magnet is on its head, and it's gotta make some things a little difficult to do, which is exactly what happened. In Magnet Charge's upbringing, all of his friends and family were all metal, but none of them actually had a magnet. So, this is where it got a little bit tricky. He was kind of pulling everyone towards him all the time, which got very annoying, I would assume. And he got exiled to a island all by himself, where he had to learn to control his abilities of his magnet. When he finally did that and mastered all of his magnetic techniques, he went home, back to his family, who happened to be all dead and no one knows why they all died and the whole planet was destroyed to this day. Crawling Catacombs used to be a civilization. This theory is at the level crawling catacombs used to be a civilization with life in it. I don't really believe this because crawling catacombs is in the underworld and it wouldn't make sense for it to be at one point a civilization. I can kind of see why you would think this though, because crawling catacombs looks a lot like an old downrun place. Not really a city, however. Heartbreaker Buckshot, a Skylanders collector's dream that will never become a reality. Officially, that is. The Magic Sensei Buckshot was supposed to get an in-game variant called Heartbreaker Buckshot that was scheduled to release sometime in February of 2017 to celebrate Valentine's Day. Buckshot was most likely given the red and pink color scheme since he carried a bow and arrow and resembled Cupid, but instead he resembles more like Satan. Yeah, I'm sure the developers thought he looked fine in-game and in artwork, but when translated over to figure form, uh, I mean, come on, it's a goat with red eyes, might as well throw some blood on it as well. The figure was never officially released, but in fall of 2021, someone who happened to be clearing out a Toys for Bob office found two prototype figures and tried selling them on eBay. And he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that meddling company forcing him to take it down. You'll most likely never find a prototype, but it's possible to paint yourself one thanks to Other Avengers video and the Skylander Dudes video on how to paint your own custom. Undead Spellpunks come from hell. This is another theory and a quite dark one as well. So basically, it says that the Undead Spellpunks come from hell, which if you count the underworld levels in Spires of Venture as hell, then technically it's correct. In Spires of Venture, the only place you can find Undead Spellpunks are in the underworld levels. However, in Swap Force, they come back and are found in other places, which I think basically disproves this theory. If this theory is true, however, it's extremely dark for a kid's game. Ghost Roaster died as a human. In Ghost Roaster's backstory, it's revealed that he was once a human named Olaf, and one day when he was walking on a mountain, he slipped and fell and landed on his behind. However, he lived, but he was badly bruised, and worse, he slipped into the Valley of the Undead. He was super hungry and decided to find some food, and there was a ghost town nearby with a bunch of white puffy spooks. And Ghost Roaster, at the time, Olaf, thought this was like an all-you-can-eat undead buffet. But the ruler of the town was very upset when he learned that all of his inhabitants were eaten by Olav. So he chained Ghost Roaster to a chain ball to warn anybody else. Eventually, Olav turned into a ghostly ghoul after spending so much time in the Valley of the Undead. Fortunately, Eon found Ghost Roaster and turned him into a Skander, but apparently Ghost Roaster, in order to become a Skander, had to promise Eon he wouldn't turn Hex into a hamburger. Archeans built underground. So basically all the levels that have Archeans as a main feature, these levels are underground. In the Archean Armory, we see a giant army of Archeans underground, as well as their civilization. And in Giants, the lost city of Arcus takes place underground. Although this is very counterintuitive for the Archeans to do, since apparently Archeans regularly forget things that are underneath them. This is why they lost items like the map to the lost city of Arcus. Dark Spyro will win. I really don't know what this means. I've looked for a while and my only guess is that since Dark Spyro and Spyro can exist together, eventually Dark Spyro wins and gains control of Spyro. If anyone knows what this means, feel free to comment because I've searched forever and I still don't have a 100% answer to what this means.
The next topic is the Leviathan. In this, if you don't know what it is, it's a large monstrous fish from Spyro's Adventure, which lived in the Leviathan Lagoon. And this Leviathan was known for eating entire villages with the people that were on it. And this was also, believe it or not, a boss in the story of Nightfall in Skylander's Ring of Heroes. And it was considered the most fearsome fish in all of Skylands. SSA Endgame Music Glitch For some reason, after finishing SSA in the Epix Xbox version of it, during the credits, it will play creepy music from the game sometimes, which some people think is a glitch because it's pretty weird to play creepy music at the end of a game for the credits. Tech Gate and Cadaver's Crypt I think the reason that this random tech gate is on the iceberg is because it's very different from a lot of gates from the game. First of all, it's in a very random place. It almost looks like they completed the level then realized they needed to put a gate somewhere in the game and they just chose here. Also, this gate plays as a challenge, not really an elemental gate. When you enter the gate, you walk down a path, then you get to a teleportation pad. And then once you step on that, you get put into a maze and you have one minute and 20 seconds to get 10 skulls. And if you complete the challenge, you get the present that goes for this gate. Molokan Mine Berserk Ultrons In Molokan Mine, there are these enemies that are stuck inside of stone, and they are one of very few enemies that do not get an introduction. We do know they are Archeans, however. They don't really do that much and are very easy to destroy. Cursed Tiki Temple was an analogy. This is a theory that has almost been proven at this point. So a lot of people believe that the second to last level of Skylander's Imaginator's Cursed Tiki Temple was an analogy from Toys for Bob, the people that made Skylanders. This theory started on Dark Spyro, a form for Spyro and Skylanders. The theory was made by user Zap Norris and the theory goes like this, quote, so as we all know, Toys for Bob is going through hard times, and now that I've played through Cursed Tiki Temple, I have the feeling that this level was some kind of allegory. First off, the setting. Toys for Bob's office is tiki themed and the level is a tiki temple. Second and most importantly, the main NPC, spoiler alert, it's not Cinder, Bob, aka the floating tiki head is the main NPC. Cinder appears for approximately two scenes in the level, that's it. Bob gets this theory rolling. Toys for Bob is of course Toys for Bob, Bob the tiki themed entity. Once you get to the actual temple, he begins to regain memory. He states the following. Quote Bob, whoever built this temple made it to honor the dragons, but the evil that has taken it honors nobody. This single quote launches a theory into overdrive. To honor the dragons may be referring to game one, where Spire was brought back and honored as the main star. The evil that possesses it now honors nobody may be Activision's plans. The possessment may be the employees being laid off or the HQ being taken down bit by bit. The honors nobody part refers to the mindset of Activision. They honor no single creator or being, only the profits they make. They honor nobody. The voodoo doll enemies might reference the actual toys and prototypes of Skylanders. And the curse could be Activision's layoffs, plans, and mismanagement of the franchise created by Toys or Bob. In conclusion, the real story of Cursed Tiki Temple is about a once peaceful and prosperous company with a tiki aesthetic being overtaken and put in ruin by the curse of capitalism and profits over passion. I think this series has a lot of weight to it and is most likely true. Golden Hellfire Golden Hellfire is simply a misnamed version of Trigger Happy's Infinite Ammo Upgrade on the Xbox 360 versions of SSA. Sometimes it'll also say Infinite Hellfire. Mini Universe this is the theory that minis and sconders come from another universe called the miniverse. Basically, in this universe, everything is smaller, although this theory is a very easily disproven theory since minis are looked at as kid versions of sconders and not shrunken versions of Skylanders. Next, we have Dino Rang's dance partner. So, you guys may not know, but Dino Rang was a very gifted dancer. Sometimes, though, he forgets his own strength. One time, way back when, 
he was dancing with a female dance partner, and he lifted her above his head and accidentally launched her screaming several miles into the air, and she has not, as of yet, come back down. In Skylanders Academy of Season 1 Episode 1, Skylanders Unite, Chaos and Glumshakes went to spy on the Skylanders during their final test. Glumshake asks Chaos why they're at Skylanders Academy, which Chaos replies that he's studying the field for his attack and needs to know who he should draft for his Skylanders Fantasy League, which leads into a funny exchange between the two characters. Don't judge me, Glumshakes. I don't mock those little candies you collect. That's my anxiety medication, sir. Even though this is most likely meant to be played as a joke, Glumshakes would possibly be someone who would need to take anxiety medication. Due to his relationship with Chaos and his unsafe work environment, Glumshakes would be under constant stress, one of the few causes of anxiety disorder. So please, Glumshakes, keep collecting those candies for your own good. Rubble Rouser's Dead Grandma so in the Skylanders book, Book of Elements, Air and Earth, it is stated that Rubble Rouser's grandma was killed by a falling mountain. Very dark for a kid's book. Origins of Dark Clones and SSA The origins of the Dark Clones are unknown. All we know is that Chaos makes them to combat us whenever we try to get one of the Eternal Sources in Spyro's Adventure, except for the Earth Source. Something to note is that the only Dark Clone that has the same name as its counterpart is Evil Eruptor, as other Dark Clones do not share names. Evil Sunburn is actually called Evil Phoenix Dragon, and another example is Dark Zap is actually called Evil Water Dragon. The weirdest name is Dark Gilgrun. His name is actually Evil Amphibious Man. There are 12 Dark Clones in total. Darkness Origin the darkness was created by the ancients. The ancients are the beings that made Skylands. One day the ancients were exploring the universe using rift engines. Somehow they ended up making a dark rift engine accidentally and this opened a portal to another world and the darkness emerged from this portal. So something interesting about the darkness backstory is that it is confirmed that the darkness is not a being from Skylands but a completely different universe which means there's another universe out there that the darkness inhabited but we don't know what this other world is or where it is from. Chaos hid the magic source. I'm pretty sure this is referring to the eternal magic source, and if it is, this entry simply isn't true, because it was the Archeans that hid the eternal magic source in their armory so that other races in Skylands wouldn't become more powerful than them. Skylands is heaven for Spyro and Cinder. So this theory actually starts before Skylanders. It starts at the very end of the last game of the Legend of Spyro series, The Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon. At the very end of this game, Spyro sacrifices himself to save the world while Cinder stays with him because she loves him. At the very end of the game, the world is saved, but something is different. There are floating islands all over the place now for some reason, and the last shot is Spyro and Cinder flying. So this theory is that when we see Spyro and Cinder, they're in heaven, and this heaven is Skylands. Although it wouldn't make Makes sense since there is a lot of evil in Skylands. Dark Spire on 3DS is a power increase from console editions. This is pretty self-explanatory, Dark Spar on the 3DS is very powerful for no reason. Also, Dark Spar was in the starter pack of the 3DS version of Spire's Adventure maybe as a way to entice you to buy the game. Academy Season 4 on April 30th, 2019, Skylanders Academy was officially cancelled after three seasons, which means that there is a possibility that there was a bit written for Academy Season 4, but that's it. Skylanders Academy Season 2 and Season 3 were basically made at the same time, and since Academy Season 3 has what most people would consider a finale episode, it's very possible that Skylanders Academy Season 4 was never going to happen. Next, we have Pandergast was a fraud. So, Pandergast, if you don't know, was a highly egotistical, double-dealing showman willing to do anything to make some money. But, according to Sharpfin, Pandergast 
is one of his least favorite former employees from back in the day. They don't exactly say what happened, but I'm assuming something not too good dealing with money. Stealth Elf Forgotten in the Front Garden One of Stealth Elf's first memories was being in a tree alone, so many people think that Stealth Elf was forgotten in some sort of garden or forest when she was born. Viva Pinata There are some claims that the level Cutthroat Carnival has some Viva Pinata references in it. Viva Pinata is an Xbox 360 game made in 2010. However, these claims have never been proven and are probably false. Princess Peach in Skylander Superchargers if you don't know, in Skylander Superchargers, Bowser and Donkey Kong made guest appearances, but there were other characters that they were considering, some of those being Kirby and Star Fox, but apparently one that got very heavily considered was Princess Peach, but she was ultimately dropped from this game. Roller Brawl slash Thumpling HUD Error Thumpling and Roller Brawl when used in Trap Team have the wrong HUD image. Instead of the Trap Team HUD image, they both used the Swap Force HUD image in Trap Team. Very weird. So this is an interesting theory about two large sentient trees, Tree Rex and Stump Smash, coming from the same forest in Skylands. Their bios are extremely similar. Tree Rex was a mystical tree from the ancient woods, while Stump Smash was a magical tree from the forest of Skylands. Tree Rex was mutated from the magic and tech pollution that leaked into the soil from the Archean factory. Trolls chopped down Stump Smash's entire forest, including him and his branches. As cool as it would be to have two Skylanders come from the same place, I think that the ancient woods and the forest of Skylands are two different places. The Ancient Woods makes an appearance in Swap Force on the 3DS. Count Moneybone was actually stealing the magic from the forest using mana pumps, the same magic that's in the soil thanks to the Arkeen factory. So if this is the same Ancient Woods, then it couldn't be Stump Smash's forest since you still have a bunch of trees in the area. Yeah, some trees could have just grown back, but Stump Smash's bio says he's still salty about the trolls ruining his home. So I'm assuming that the trolls really messed up that forest, man. Lovely Amiibo. If you use the Skylanders, Bowser, and Donkey Kong in Super Mario Odyssey in Amiibo mode, the game says that they are, quote, lovely Amiibo. Where the Hydra went. After SSA, we don't know what happened to Chaos's Hydra. After Chaos was defeated, the Hydra withdrew back into the darkness and was never seen again. However, in Super Charters, we do see it again when you read a book about the Hydra. And we also see a different type of Hydra in the Netflix series for Skylanders, but I doubt this Hydra has anything to do with the one we see in the games. Vathic was Cinder. Vathic is the main villain of the expansion pack level Dragon's Peak, and he was actually originally going to be a Skander in Skander Spire's Adventure, but Cinder was already the undead dragon for the undead element, and they decided to go with Cinder over Vathic. They still wanted to keep him in the game, but there were no other elements that they thought fit Vathic, so they made him into a villain within the game. Roboto Ball Roboto Ball is a popular sport that the Archeans played. It was mostly played in the lost city of Arcus. The reason why Archeans liked Roboto Ball so much is because the balls had a tendency to explode. You actually get to see the Roboto Balls in Skynder's Giants in the level Lost City of Arcus and bringing order to chaos. Chain of Fortitude 
The Chain of Fortitude is the giant chain that you use to get to the magic levels in Skylander Spire's Adventure. The chain starts at the ruins, aka the hub world for SSA, but you don't know where else it may go. We do know that the chain eventually splits at least into two separate chains since you use it to get to two different levels. They never really explain why you need to use this chain to get to those places, and if you look it up on the Skylander's wiki, nothing comes up. I always thought the chain was pretty cool though. Lost Islands is canon. This is another one that's pretty self-explanatory. This is the theory that the mobile game for Skanders, Skanders Lost Islands, is also canon with the main console games. This is pretty plausible, nothing stops this theory from being true. Next, we have Origami Spyro. Before the idea of Skylanders even came out, Toys for Bob began thinking of what they should do for their next Spyro game. And early on, they were thinking of making a Spyro that was tiny, gritty looking, and that ran around the world of bookshelves and was made out of origami. So this Spyro would have been able to take different shapes, kind of morphing into different objects, I'm assuming, with his kind of origami posture. And this was a cool concept that was supposed to be based in a post-apocalyptic world where there were no humans and Spyro and all of his friends were only six inches tall. Enemies would use objects like forks and knives as weapons and the main mystery for this premise would have had players wondering what happened to the whole human race. Stump Demons on Console Stump Demons on console versions of SSA only appear in the Dark Light Crypt, but in the Giants 3DS version, they are called Tree Rexes, which is also a name of a Skander. Stump Demons in the console versions would eventually get replaced by the Bark Demons in Skylanders Giants. There's two elemental gates in Skylander Spiral's Adventure Chapter 2, Perilous Pastures, a tech gate and a water gate. But there's a secret area that possibly should have been locked behind an elemental gate. When you go to the landing dock to save Kali, you'll notice a locked gate with a legendary treasure behind it. There's no way you can unlock it from the outside, so how do you get in there? Before you push the turtle block to get to the water gate, there's a suspicious patch of grass. Play as a life Skylander and a path begins to form. Honestly, it's extremely easy to miss this, even with the subtle hints of the life elemental bonus and life symbol on the gate. Like, did something happen to the actual gate or something? I guess since it wasn't a hat in the area, it couldn't get a gate. Bro, this ain't a pig, it's a sheep. Darkwater Cove Graveyard Inside the level Darkwater Cove, there is a water-themed graveyard. We don't know who is in these graveyards, although it is probably pirates. Dragon Sheep The Dragon Sheep is something that Hugo said existed or something that he dreamed about. This isn't really surprising since Hugo for some reason has a terrible fear for sheep. LGTV Chase Variants the variants Crystal Whirlwind and Red Camo were released in an LG TV bundle as chase variants for Skylanders Battlegrounds, another mobile game for Skylanders. On the Wii Home menu, go to the bottom left to Wii Options, and then go into Save Data, and then you'll see cool icons for each save file of the games you played, including the Skylander games. Spyro's Adventure, Giants, and Trap Team have flashing elements. Spyro's Adventure shows magic, air, life, and water. Giants shows fire, undead, earth, and air. And Trap Team shows magic, life, water, and tech. Meanwhile, Swap Force shows a stock image of a washbuckler figure, and Superchargers Racing shows Super Shot Stealth Elf. The Toys for Bob Skylander games manage to keep a consistent theme with their icons while letting Vicarious Visions do whatever. Sun Dragon in Skylander Superchargers. 
Sundragon was a beta version of Camo that got pretty far into development as he has a figure and he was also in the very first trailer for Skylanders. There's even gameplay of him out there, although I couldn't really find anything about him in Superchargers. My guess is that he made probably a very, very small cameo somewhere in Superchargers or he was mentioned in a story scroll. Dark Light Crypt Dark Light Crypt is an expansion pack level in Spiral's Adventure. It introduces a thing that is also used in later games, realm hopping. You can hop from the alive realm and the undead realm in this chapter. In the alive realm, the crypt looks nothing like a crypt, and it is a very vibrant place and very beautiful. But once you go into the undead realm of this level, it is lifeless and dark. The villain of this level is Oculus, a giant creature that has an eye, and eventually you defeat him by shooting cannons at him. Moon Widows used to attack. Moon Widows are small spider-like creatures that are in the undead levels in Spiral's Adventure. They don't attack you, but they spit out webs on the floor that make you slow down and are very annoying. But in the beta footage of Spiral's Adventure, it shows that they used to attack and be a lot larger. Oracle Game Crash. Apparently the level, the Oracle, in Skylanders Giants is very crash prone. My guess to why is that because there are so many separate areas within the Oracle that maybe weaker consoles can't handle them. The Aphid Lifter The Aphid Lifter is the legendary treasure found in Crawling Catacombs and is the only spider in the entire Skylanders series with 8 legs. This legendary treasure also gives you 750 gold. It also gets used as an achievement icon in the Wii versions of SSA, for whatever reason. Pandorian Gift Shop Inside the level Arcane Armory, there is a very small gift shop that is super small and Arcanes can't fit inside of it. Who knows what is in there? Next, we have the Volcanic Vault, which was an exclusive toy, part of a sales promotion in only the UK and the United States, where it was included in the Wii, 360, and PS3 starter pack of Skylander Spyro's Adventure. When the toy is placed on the Portal of Power for the first time, it unlocks Multiplayer Volcanic Vault Arena for play in battle mode. But that's not all, because the Volcanic Vault, the physical place, was exactly where Spitfire's vehicle, the Hot Streak, was forged. Supercharge with Love Full Version At the fake ending of Superchargers, when the credits roll, Vicarious Visions made a corny credit song called Supercharged with Love as a joke. However, the song gets cut off when it's revealed that the darkness is still around and the game isn't over. However, you can still listen to the full Supercharged with Love version on YouTube. But something to note is the full version is a tad different from the one you hear at the fake ending of Superchargers. So the first lines of Supercharged with Love you hear the fake end of Superchargers is you beat the darkness you set as free. And then it goes on for a little bit more. But in the full version, this line doesn't happen till the near end of the song. And the way the line is said and the tone is different as well. Skylanders Spiders Adventure slash Skylanders Giant Spiders have six legs. We all know that spiders have eight legs, but in Spiders Adventure and Giant, spiders have six legs. But also, these spiders are from Skyland, so spiders and scons probably just have six legs. Ankh Beekman, real name Cabin Scott, is the author of most of the Skylander novels that expand on the Skylanders universe, including the Machine of Doom novel and the Mass of Power series that consists of eight books. But there's also a story scroll that you can find in Skylanders Giants. The scroll is located in the secret vault of secret levels. Find it and you'll hear this cool reference of Ankh Beekman. It was Ankh Beekman who first wrote, The eyes are the window to the mouth, the mouth the doorway to the eyes. In Brock's Rumble Town, a certain totem's eyes and mouth can allow access to another kind of doorway, 
but Ankh would not know of this, as it is one of many villages the celebrated penguin novelist is banned from entering. Chaos's Soda Company. In the first level of Superchargers Rift at Skylands, there are barrels of soda with a logo on them and it reads Chaos Incorporated, which means that sometime between the events of Skylanders Trap Team and Skylanders Superchargers, while Chaos took over Skylands, he also started the Soda Company. Chapter 17 Whirlpool. In Spire's Adventure, Water Skylanders and for some reason Double Trouble and Stump Smash can swim in water. And in Chapter 17 of Spire's Adventure Creepy Settle though, there's actually water surrounding the level. And if you explore it enough, there is a whirlpool in the water and it takes you inside the citadel. This kind of acts like a shortcut for the level. Scrapped Classes there is one confirmed scrap battle class for Imaginators. When Toy Survival was working on Imaginators 2.0, which was a scrapped extension to Imaginators, they made a class where the Skander would ride on beasts. I like to call this the Beast Rider class, and there is actually an image of a Sensei for this class riding a Firewolf. My guess is that there was probably at least a couple more battle classes that were ultimately scrapped. Who Built Lava Lakes Railway? Lava Lakes Railway is a level where you go down a railway which eventually leads into a big volcano, but no one knows who made it. Molikins help you in the level, but it's not possible that Molikins made the railway since they are pretty much blind. Whoever made Lava Lakes Railway is a mystery. Censored Spell Name when you are battling Chaos in Chapter 11, Falling Forest, after defeating one of his minions, Chaos says he's going to use a spell so powerful that he dares not speak its name. Even though this spell is supposed to be pretty powerful, you beat it. But we still don't know what that spell's name actually is. Now we have Grill X. Not to be mistaken for Drill X, which are assumed brothers because they look very similar, but the main difference is one has drills and one can grill. And he can also be seen in the background in Superchargers Racing of the map Grill X's Big Barbecue. Robot on Citadel Beach. There is a robot you eventually find in the hub world of Spiral's Adventure. His name is Clamtron, and you start him up when you feed him some oil. He used to be able to extract pearls from clams, but now for some reason his machine is broken, and now he makes bombs out of clams. These bombs eventually become pretty useful. Eye of the Ancients the Eye of the Ancients is the missing piece to the Core of Light, and you find it in Monstrous Isles and Superchargers, and you obtain it by defeating the Thunder Toe, who uses it as a necklace. Dust Bunny Dust Bunny refers to another sensei that was going to be used in the Scrapped Imaginators Part 2. His actual name is Blaster Tech, but Dust Bunny was one of his possible names that he could have been named. Some of his other alpha names were Dust Guster, Dust Runner, and Gust Bust. His weapon was a vacuum that had a bunch of bunnies in it, and he would shoot them out of his vacuum. Ah, the core of light. Who can forget the major plot device of the first Skylanders game? It was destroyed by Chaos's Hydra and rebuilt by the player when going all over Skylands searching for each missing piece. However, the core of light was never at its full potential because it was never completed. In Skylanders Superchargers, Pomfrey's research in the Spellpunk library reveals that the core of light was missing a component that would turn the beacon of light into a full-blown weapon to defeat the darkness once and for all. That 
item would be the Eye of the Ancients, located in the Monstrous Isles. The Skylanders retrieve the Eye of the Ancients, however, they never complete the Core of Light since the Sky Eater destroys it in a surprise attack, leaving the main characters no other choice but to come up with a new plan. The Core of Light also makes an appearance in Imaginators, as its new location is in the Light Sensei realm, using most components that remained and is fueled by lasers of power crystals. So we never get to see the Core of Light fully completed in any of the Skylander games, so its full potential has never been witnessed. Every copy of SSA is personalized. My guess is that this theory came around the same time that every Mario 64 copy is personalized creepypasta came out. So basically people are saying that a lot of people are having different experiences with the game. So people are starting to say that every single copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. This claim is obviously not true. Not every copy of Mario 64 or SSA is personalized. Eon Citadel Element Totem There is a totem near one of the apple trees in the hub world of SSA. This is an elemental totem and you need a scounder of each element to get all the gold from this totem. If you shatter each block of this totem with the correct element, you get all the gold from this totem. However, the final prize can only be earned once in each save file that you have. Also, the gold dropped by this totem is only ever seen in the hub world. You never see this gold in any other level. Who attacked the Dirt Seas? The Dirt Seas is a location mentioned in Skylanders, but we never see it. Although we do know that the Dirt Seas face an explosion that turned the entire sea into a sheet of glass and it's unknown who set off this explosion. Willikin Ghost Girl in the level Willikin Village, the inhabitants are wooden people called Willikins. However, one is a bit different. There is one room where everything is a bit off, and the Willikin looks like a ghost. This ghost girl has creeped out many Skanders fans. We don't know what happened to her, since Willikins are not alive but are wooden machines, so it doesn't make sense for her to be a ghost. Pretty spooky. <laughs> Don't shoot. When using Trigger Appy, if you go up to the NPC Quigley that's in the hub world, he says don't shoot. It's very weird that Quigley would say this since Trigger Appy is a hero. Maybe Quigley knows something that we don't know about Trigger Happy. Natty Bumpo When Eon was a kid, he would spend his days polishing pots and pans in his master's kitchen. His master's name was Natty Bumpo. One day, Eon accidentally started his master's portal, and he accidentally teleported Natty Bumpo into the dirt seas. Then in the official Skanders 2013 annual, a book, Eon briefly states that Natty Bumpo was a large man with a very long beard and red hair. And he also says as soon as Natty Bumpo was brought back, they trained Eon to be a portal master, which implies that Natty Bumpo was probably dead when they brought him back to Skylands. Kinda dark. Sky 7 is real 2401. This is a nod to the urban legend Elda's Real 2401, which is from Super Mario 64. This urban legend was once something that a lot of people believed. It was basically just a theory that Luigi could be unlocked as a playable character in Super Mario 64. This entry is just a reference to that. And the last thing I have for you guys today is Washbuckler was a villain in Skylanders Academy. Washbuckler only makes one cameo in all of Skylanders Academy, and this is in the episode Power Struggle, during Master Eon's flashback. It's very weird because he seems to be siding with Strykor. Strykor is known as the Light Eater, 
and ultimate evil, and is the overarching antagonist in the entire show. Apparently, as punishment for his evil actions in the Great War, Washbuckler was sealed within the Book of Dark Magic, though he still orchestrated most of the events of Season 2 to gain his freedom. Cadaver's Crypt is Hell Probably one of the darkest theories on the iceberg, and it isn't technically wrong. Like I already said, if you consider the underworld levels as hell in this kind of series, then Cadaver's Crypt is hell. It is full of undead creatures that are hostile towards you, although this probably isn't the case. The level is titled Cadaver's Crypt, and I think that's exactly what it is, a crypt. There are a bunch of skulls and bones in this level, which basically kind of proves that it is a crypt. Well, that was Iskander's Iceberg. Make sure to subscribe to Spinning and Mykonoid. Thanks for joining me on this video, bros. As you guys know, this is the third Iceberg video that I've done for Skylanders, and for the foreseeable future at least, this is probably the final Iceberg video I will do. Thank you all though for making this one of my most successful series on the channel. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed exploring the iceberg. Like I said, this is probably my last video for it, but if I ever find it maybe an even bigger iceberg later down the line, I will consider making a video about that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and thank you guys for watching. Peace.